Jacques Delors, this uh, double equation, reform, growth, austerity, solidarity, how can this double equation give a response to our citizens' concerns uh, with all the uh, calls for all types of extremism? We should remember that the European system, and more particularly the economic and monetary system, uh, had a hard time fighting the world crisis. But we should not forget that it was a world crisis. I won't say any more about this, but uh, a lot of uh, excesses were committed. Uh, I remember a, a business leader who used to tell me that uh, we were create, that they were creating a lot of value. Was it a, a stock exchange value? Uh, so I won't say more, but the Eurozone did not decide to go through a crisis on its own. This uh, happened in the framework of a much wider context. Now, uh, when I hear uh, do reforms, you'll get growth. Uh, this uh, really uh, is uh, something that uh, upsets me. Let me explain. The growth model, first of all, the growth model has developed uh, over time with a declining share of agriculture and then later industry uh, to the benefit of the services sector. And this growth model was uh, often criticized by those who thought that another type of development was possible which would be more respectful of nature and of men. But we forgot about this because uh, currently we are uh, trying to find growth as much as possible. But maybe we should wonder whether th this new type of development would, of course, if we properly choose the advantages and the drawbacks, would not make it possible to create as many jobs. So this scenario uh, has been forgotten. Uh, because uh, we need to uh, ensure the uh, ability to live to uh, about 10 or 20 percent of our population. So we need to find growth again. And for France, uh, number one priority is competitiveness. We have said this in France for quite a number of years. At least over the last three years, competitiveness is of paramount importance in globalization and in the interconnectedness we are living in. Competitiveness, what does uh, that mean? We need to have a double a debate on this. We talk a lot about industry in France. Some people think that the ability to innovate, research and ability to innovate uh, are based on the needs expressed by industry. And others think that with new information technologies, there are also uh, possibilities of innovation. But we should not certainly wait until the end of the crisis. We have to do something now so that we can create new jobs and reduce unemployment. But as I said, someday we'll have to get back to the scenario of the quality of life, which is related to all this discussion about environment. As to uh, the reform, I'm a bit upset about the, the, this uh, way we keep talking about the needs for reform. Let me take the uh, French example of the labor market. The labor market is not sufficiently flexible, but do you know that 80% of uh, contracts are fixed term uh, contracts or interim contracts? So what else can we do? Should we have a single type of contract? It doesn't make any sense. There is also a need for flexibility in the way businesses are managed. And in this respect, I'm very hopeful in the uh, agreement that was signed between employers and trade unions. If we want to talk about reforming the labor market, shouldn't we forget that 130,000 
uh, young people leave school without any diploma, and that uh, a lot of young people, after one year at university, just drop out. And all this is related. We have to remember this. Another tricky issue about uh, the reform is the future of uh, welfare. Of course, uh, welfare spending uh, increases uh, more quickly than uh, GDP, even when GDP is about 2% in real terms. So again, if we want to save the welfare system, we have to reform it and as quickly as possible, because otherwise this system might collapse and uh, exclude uh, the most uh, underprivileged part of the population, those who are the less prote least protected. And there is also uh, the aspect of the single market, something that is not well understood by the French people. It is an element of economic progress and of productivity, and it has to be reformed and extend it to services, single market being extended to services. Yes, to services, to the services sector, but also to the banking sector, because there are very wide spreads between banking rates uh, for German or Spanish businesses. Now, as to immediate recovery, I really like uh, Tommaso Podiascova's uh, formula. Austerity for countries and recovery for Europe. This is what he used to say. But even with the uh, growth pact that we have, Europe hasn't done enough. And uh, had Europe done more in terms of investment, of fight against unemployment, then governments would have been in a better position to go through this difficult period and to defend the European ideas. So the burden sharing would have meant that Europe would have been more positive in terms of recovery. Well, in The Guardian this morning, they said that the Commission would authorize the use of structural funds by countries so that it would not be counted in their debt. But this is a detailed aspect. This is just a detail. But if you have a, a, a multi-year budget, well, I said that for Great Britain, for example, if it wants to exit the EU, we could find a special agreement for it. And a lot of uh, people told me, well, uh, it, it's important for Great Britain to stay. But if uh, Great Britain uh, is a break on the uh, European process, we have to properly understand this. So how can we make sure that we have a strong engine and uh, a lighter break? I remember Margaret Thatcher. Uh, she said uh, that she was against uh, everything that we proposed in the EU, but uh, she would never go out of the EU. So this is a, a slight difference with the situation today. Let me make four comments. As I said earlier today, we should not forget that the origin of the origins of the crisis is not real economy, but the implosion of a financial system that was not operating properly. We have rescued banks, but we have not corrected the way the financial system operates. Of course, it will take some time, but there is a cumulative annual growth of 60 or 70 percent of capital movement uh, with a global economy that uh, will have a growth of uh, 3 percent. Uh, 40 percent coming from China and India. So we should not forget 
the origin of the origins of the problem, as Helmut uh, Schmidt used to say. It was the inappropriate operation of the financial system. We even financialized the economy, and this financialization process became unbearable. So this was my first comment. It is a very simple principle, and I fully agree with what has just been said. Now, with growth and the creation of jobs, we should not think that with growth and the creation of jobs, we're going to be able to pay for our debts. We have to find a balance between austerity and this. Some countries have some uh, breathing space nationally to have active anti-cyclical or counter-cyclical policies. And the European Union must use this margin of maneuver that uh, some countries have. We should not allow for a, a loss in GDP. So we have to make uh, additional adjustments. I just want to note that uh, the uh, social economy of markets has been based mainly in Germany, and this is an idea that I share, and I fight the uh, notion of a, a market society. Citizens talk a lot about the market and market requirements, but the market is not a candidate for the elections. So we have to strike a proper balance. We have to give some positive signs. There are so many European projects that are not being activated. And there is a savings at uh, European level to finance this uh, project. Third comment, we need an economic government for Europe with a democratic legitimacy. This is extremely important, but what we want today a lot of people do not express the need for this economic government. People say that it won't work if there is no balance between economic, monetary, and fiscal processes. Now, fourth comment, we need to reindustrialize Europe. We need to provide Europe with a higher uh, possibility, capacity uh, to take part in global output, and we have a problem of competitiveness, and therefore we need to carry out reforms. And I've looked at the US. I certainly don't want to make comparisons, but the US have understood that innovation, not innovation as a sector of activity, but a specific behavior attitude is the only way that will restore the competitiveness of our economies in the European space in order to be fully integrated on the world stage. So we need a highly competitive economy, which is sustainable over time, medium and long term, sustainable as well in terms uh, of the environment and with a social content. We have to find new bases for this. We've talked about social cohesion, but this on, these are not the bases that we used for the uh, post-war pact, but we have to base uh, our processes now on the new realities of today. This is what we have to do through a dialogue, through a major social dialogue. The uh, situation is quite different from what it was post-war, and there is no other way to go about it. Before we give the floor to the room, just one question. I was uh, struck this morning when we talked about uh, youth employment. 
I was surprised to see that our German uh, colleagues uh, insisted on the role of the private sector to take uh, an active part in those uh, job creation programs or plans. And their French counterparts never uh, mentioned the same uh, paramount role for the private sector. So Jacques Delors, do you think that even though our political uh, cultures are quite different, do you think there is still room for a sort of a, a combination of best practices from across the Rhine? Well, there are two points of divergence in our histories and traditions. First of all, the uh, employees' participation in uh, uh, boards of directors with a very important role played by uh, workers' committees in German uh, companies. And this is a big difference, and this is why during uh, the Schroeder period, there was this whole uh, process of adaptation that was carried out. So that's a big difference. Can we reach such a mindset in France? I don't think so. Second point, uh, dual training with apprenticeship. I think we can achieve this because we have a long tradition of uh, permanent training. We uh, devote quite an amount of uh, of amount uh, quite an amount of money on this. So we have this uh, long tradition of permanent training, so that in each company there is always money spent to update the knowledge and skills of the employees. It's not always used. Well, it works very well, pretty well, much better than uh, what is said. You know this uh, law on permanent uh, training uh, is the reason why there has been an increase in productivity. But what we are dealing with now is the dual type of training with apprenticeship. And we know that in universities, those who really went on to uh, work for a short period of time uh, are in a much better position on the labor market once they uh, get a degree. So given the uh, situation, I believe that uh, this dual training, the apprenticeship possibility is a very good way for everyone to get increased confidence and to get to gain increased knowledge and skills. And I think it's a solution even to uh, equality of opportunities in education. Thank you. Any question? Please introduce yourself. Stand up, please, and then you will be given a mic. I'm a uh, student at the Hertie School of Governance in Berlin. I'm part of the study group who presented two hours ago. Uh, last November, I was at the conference uh, in Berlin, and I went out after 10 hours with quite a frustration. Uh, I lost a little bit the hope. Mr. Gonzalez knows this story already. Uh, I lost a little bit the hope that uh, the most distinguished people were not able to tell me in 10 hours where we head for Europe. And now Jacques Delors makes a good case in saying, well, the proposal that was set to us today uh, in the morning is not, it's not fully convincing. But he does that in 10 minutes, which is a kind of progress. Well, what I want to argue is, no, 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 what happens is we go out and have very fragmented ideas what the solution is. And uh, this, this might be a reasonable democratic dis discussion, and this is awesome. But what I think uh, in a Europe with 28 different constituencies is that we need a different discussion that is not focused on single policy measures, but, but we need a more scenario-oriented proposal making. So if Jacques Delors is arguing for a particular uh, proposal, it's not sufficient to say this is good for a labor market for uh, youth unemployment. That's not sufficient because you need to answer more uh, uh, aspects. If we have uh, Martin Schulz arguing for a stronger role for the parliament, I say it is not convincing because there is not enough context. 
in Europe with 28 constituencies, and I repeat that, you can't argue with single policy measures. You need to make a scenario, and we tried two hours ago to show such a scenario, and I would love to hear some harsh criticism of that scenario, or a better one. I would love to hear a better one. Do you have a question, or do you want Oh, I think this is, this is food for thought enough, I think. Okay, so what you are actually telling us is that uh, all these dignitaries should comment upon your scenarios rather than try and explain the complexities of what they have been trying to do over the past years. I think, uh, then I make it a question. Yes, please. So, Mr. A short one, because we yes. have... Yes, okay, a short one. Okay. Mr. Delors, give us a vision that tells us, first, economic future, and second, political future, but also not just say we need a government that shows the economy where it goes, but more detail, more detail. In two minutes and a half. Je n'ai pas parlé du gouvernement économique. I haven't mentioned the economic government, no, but uh, our young friend believes that uh, everything we say is too vague and that in two minutes and a half we have to define a political and an economic objective that can be reached so that after 10 hours of debate we can go out of this room with very concrete and specific ideas. Okay, let's talk about the economic government. Ms. Merkel told the European Parliament, I did not, I had not read the uh, Delors Committee's report. If I had followed it at the time, we wouldn't be faced with the current difficulties. So this shows that there was something wrong in the first place. I never used the word or uh, well, the expression economic government. Why? Because I know that it scares the Germans and they don't want to discuss about it. They're always afraid that we are going to increase control over the uh, European Central Bank. In the 1997-1999 uh, structure that we adopted, well, the monetary part was excellent, but the economic part was not as good. Uh, ministers of finance, when they met, would never talk about their economic policies. And it's only when we were faced with major difficulties that we started to discuss uh, economic policies and economic possible solutions. So I believe that a good balance between the monetary and the economic policies is absolutely fundamental within Europe. Then how to translate that into the institutional aspects? I think we have to consolidate our economic and monetary union through strengthened uh, coordination and solidarity, because as a Sciences Po student uh, can do, uh, it, he can go and see his teacher to uh, correct his uh, his work, his paper, and then he, well, what is at stake is that Eurozone governments have to try to define their common interest and their shared interest, and they have to apply them both in economic and monetary terms. This is the only thing that we ask for. There is no institutional recipe. It's the basic principle that is being, uh, that is at the heart of the matter. It was forgotten. In in 1997, 1999, Mr. Chirac believed that uh, with adding a growth uh, and a stability pact, it was sufficient. French people love such uh, new formulas. And we can note that uh, Mr. Hollande also used the same type of vocabulary during his first European summit in June. If you allow me, I don't think it's not, it's very difficult to agree. For example, is there a basic difference in the approach by the German labor minister and what Mr. Delors said? I think employment or jobs will be created by employers and not the governments. We have to focus on employers, but access 
to work, access to jobs, human capital. Major companies can uh, put in place specific procedures. But for small and medium-sized companies, it's much more difficult. And they have to find those people in society who can work for them with the appropriate level of training. And this is something that has to be done by the state because uh, SMEs cannot do it alone. Now, in terms of working contract, we've talked a lot about uh, labor reforms. In Spain, we do too. But let's see. Why do we keep talking about single contracts? It's quite irrational. We uh, talk about single contracts in civil right, for example, in civil law, for example, in trade law, but such contracts have to be uh, contracts have, uh, have to be different. It's, a contract is different when you need to build a house or when you need to manufacture a car. All contracts are different. So if there is one specificity that has to be complied with, it is the integration contract. I mean the contract the, for the first job, the integration of long-term unemployed so that they can be reintegrated into the labor market. So for those people, there can be a specialized single contract. But that's all. The general single contract is something which I believe is ridiculous. Another question? Yes, go ahead. Please stand up so that a mic can be brought to you. Um, if you could just tell us I again who you are. I actually have a detailed plan that's been on the table with the Bank of England. The governor's office is well aware of it. The cabinet office in the United Kingdom is well aware of it. And who are you? I, my name is Chris Coles, the Capital Spillway Trust. It was an idea I came up with in 1994 because I could not pay European patent office fees for patents, and I got abandoned by the European Patent Office in 1992. I'm the originating inventor of all your camera phones with GPS. I never made a penny out of it because I never had a European patent because I never could raise the funds to actually develop the products. So I'm a part of the economic history of Europe. Now, I sat down and created a set of rules in 1994, which I called the Capital Spillway Trust. If you want to go on to chriscoles.com, uh, I believe it's page 4.html, you will find a detailed proposal to create 6 million private sector jobs in the United Kingdom, which can be equally applied in any nation on the planet. It's been widely debated on the Times in London website. Uh, I have yet to receive a detailed negative criticism of it. If you want to look at it, have a look at it. It's there to be read. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Une question encore? Oui, mademoiselle, madame. Another question? Good evening. I'm a fifth year student at Sciences Po. What is the legitimacy we can give to a stricter economic government while we have countries in the EU, such as Cyprus, which is a tax haven? And if we go further in this question, what type of Europe are we building? The Erasmus program, for example, which is a, a basic program to build Europe, which is in danger in some countries, such as Spain, because of austerity measures. OK, both of you, please, a brief answer, which will be our conclusion, as uh, the Spanish prime minister has just arrived. Uh, when I started earlier on, I talked about the economic government of Europe. I am in favor of a European finance ministry, for example, to uh, supervise the development of uh, fiscal stability. But I would be against 
the appointment of a government without any parliamentary uh, approval. So this would not be legitimate. Now, in terms of uh, monetary policy, there is also some fragility. So, on the other hand, you raised the question of Cyprus. I must say that I have not uh, understood anything about what we did. I can imagine that unanimously the Eurogroup decided, made that decision. To me, it is uh, incomprehensible. I've asked the question to a number of economy ministers, and they said that it was a very serious mistake, but uh, no one assumed the responsibility for this mistake. Jacques Delors. Uh, first of all, I'm not going to uh, explain the whole project I have to strengthen the monetary and economic union, but what I want is to have a strong participation of parliament, of national parliaments in those fields of monetary and economic policies, and I think this is quite feasible. Now for the rest, as we need to conclude now, I have the feeling, after this full day of discussion, that a lot of people have understood that the choice for Europe now is either uh, survival or decline. It is true that we are going through a difficult period, and we have to accept it, and we uh, should not uh, limit ourselves to uh, simply uh, uh, accepting the dictatorship on the part of media. There are things to be done. First of all, a reform of the general vision of Europe. Governments need to uh, have a long-term and a wide-ranging vision and should not think about their next elections. And I won't mention them, but there are some European politicians and leaders who've shown that they were able to take those risks. And this is only with such a long-term and wide-ranging vision that we will convince European citizens to uh, take part in this reform. And we also need a reform in terms of mindset of the European soul. This not in the religious uh, sense of the word, but I certainly uh, want to reassure Bernard-Henri Lévy, we do not believe that we are the only universal civilization. We are only the part of the world where there is the, let's say, the less bad democracy or the and as our students said earlier, uh, solidarity and freedom, and I would also add accountability. There needs to be accountability and responsibility if we want to carry out our projects. So if I had to rewrite the uh, Charter of Human Rights for Europe, I would call it the Charter of Human of Citizens' Rights and Duties.